Diamond Matter channel, welcome. Right, today I'm going to be reviewing a video by the Goldsmiths Workshop Secrets channel. The guy Yako is a really good jeweler and he does things a little bit differently to me. So if you subscribe to my channel, I highly recommend you subscribe to his channel, Goldsmiths Workshop Secrets, because he does things a bit different. So uh, I always recommend learning things as much as you can from different people because everyone's got their own little ways of doing things and you'll find you can take uh, a method or a technique from this guy and apply it with something someone else taught you and you end up with your own style and you just find all the exact things that work best for you personally. So yeah, learn from different jewelers. So check out all the jewelry making channels. Don't just stick to one or two. Uh, if you don't know Gold Goldsmith's Workshop Secrets, I highly recommend it. So yeah, the guy Yako, he's a good jeweler. If you click about, he says he's been making jewelry for about 30 years. So he's got a lot of experience. So I'll get into it after I so say thank you to these new patrons we've got the last couple of days. We've got Nicholas Patricio and Jane Rays. Thank you very much, guys. Really appreciate you becoming patrons. The contributions from the patrons genuinely make this channel possible to continue. So I really appreciate the patrons. If you want to become a patron yourself, it's not just you give me money and I say thanks. Just sit here and like continue as I am. Uh, I give you something back. So you get a shout out on the next upload after you join. You get access to the new YouTube videos two weeks before they go public on YouTube. And then classic and official patrons will get access to all the full instructional guides I've made. So they're like usually one hour, two hours sometimes, or a bit more, uh, kind of like online courses. So from start to finish, I'll teach you how to hand make different designs every time. So I just did a cluster ring recently. That was quite an in-depth one. That went over two hours. Yeah, if you want access to those, you've got to become a patron, classic or official patrons. And you save 10% if you pay for a whole year in one go. So a few people have done that lately. It is actually a cheaper way to become a patron of the channel. But anyway, right, let's get into this video. Okay, we are recording. I cannot see the screen. 50 year old headphones. Sennheisers never die. Right, let's get into it. Okay, this is the first of the two videos. He's got a Doberman, now I'm jealous. Dobermans are quite common, well not as common, but you see them more often than you do in England, out here in Japan. Really beautiful dogs. Thank you, Yako, for making this video. I, I really did not want to do it. <laughs> also, 100%, he did a way better job than I would have done. He made it really, really neatly. Okay, so we're starting off with a tube. It's quite quite a chunky tube. Might just be the burrs. Okay, divide it off the depth you want. He said one millimeter for the gap in the middle. Okay, so mark that out. Cutting it off. I've got my um, my little chenier tube cutter guide vice thing. I'd definitely be using that if I was cutting out all these collets. So yeah, starting with a tube, that's good because there's no join in it and uh, it's hard metal as well. It's, it can only be a benefit on a, on a bracelet that's going to be shaking around someone's wrist. Okay, 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 a little bit of fast forward action. Let's cut off another one. All right, so he's doing a video with three. Okay, what's going on here? So he's taken one of his collets, he's put a draw plate down on the bench. I think I know what he's going to do. He's got a punch in his hand. There you go, it's a four-sided square punch. Uh, check out my recent video, seven ways to mark out four claw positions on a collet. It was doing pretty much this. But he's doing it with his collets. He's just got this four corners they're perfectly opposite each other um, yeah you just put the marks just dent in the inside so then you just copy that where the positions are to the outside a really good way to get an accurate claw position there you go you can see the dents inside okay so he's done done the dents inside copied the with a saw cut down the side of the collet you can see the two horizontal lines that's the gap in the middle that's going to be cut out He's talking about uh, using your dividers to find the halfway between the claws. Or something as small as that, I would just do it by eye. I think it's relatively easy, but it's good advice what he's offering to really get an accurate mark. This is one of those things where I've got experience, so there's ways I just do it. But if you're new to making jewelry, your perception of halfway points might not be as trained up as mine. So he's got 0.5 drill, so that's really small. And that has a massive handpiece. Almost looks like something missing there. 
That looks uncomfortable. Look, I told you he's professional. He's wearing like a, a jeweler's apron. And he's got a, probably a 10 times loop on this cord. It's like a real jeweler. <laughs> okay, a bit of action. We got a drill hole on that line and it's just phrased out both sides down the middle with a cylinder phrase. Y thickness 0 0.6. 0 0.6, I think he said he used a 0 0.5 mil drill, a 0 0.6 mil bit of wire. It'll force in there and stay in position. And he's gone right through it, let's just stick it out in the middle. That's gonna be, that's gonna be good for soldering. Using this piddly little torch, I don't like them, but there are certainly times where they are better than the big oxypropane torch I use. I, you can do any job with those, but sometimes a really micro flame is uh, very helpful. What's he doing? He's got solder on the end of this stick and applying it on there. Uh, I, yeah, I would have done that differently. I don't like things rolling around the bench. I want things to secure in position and then I'll apply solder and make that solder flood. It's like picking up uh, picking up solder with that stick and then putting it in position. Okay, so it's got the hole there. So there's a little groove above it, both sides, they're opposite. It's got a saw cut down there uh, in four positions where the claw's gonna go and then opposite sides in the middle are grooved out. Oh, there's a cat at the door now. It's not gonna shut up. It's gone for point, point 0.8 to do the claws. I don't know what the size stone goes in, it's like maybe four mil. That's all right, you just sit right on me, why not? Okay, so can you see? He's got a hole this side and a hole there. The claw, the wire was wedged in one side. And it comes up under. When you're pulling them around, they've got to be really tight. So it goes through the side and then und out from underneath and then wrapped over. There you go, that's a good example. It goes that way, it goes that way. You snip them off and then if you can get them all tight, uh, push them down, the solder in position. And that's how they're joined together. But it's really important to get them evenly tight. You don't want some flopping about and some really loose. The whole thing has got to be evenly sort of flexible. Again, a lot of jewelers do this, they put paper down and s scuff the bottom. Sometimes, rarely, I do that. I I'd be using my paper disc for that job. But look how neat they are, they all look pretty good. They're nicely made and holding straight really nicely. Okay, all right, I wanna, I wanna stroke that dog. Right, so let's check out the next video now. <sighs> okay. I always let the adverts play when you're watching uh, Jewelers YouTube channels because <laughs> we earn money from them. <laughs> All right, Google in Japanese. Google, Google, not Google. So this is a year later, his videos became more professional. It's got a better camera, better sound equipment. Wow, it's a proper proper line bracelet. I'd be I'd do the cylinder burr, maybe start it off with that. Or we'll drill it out, get the cylinder burr in there, and then uh, I'd be getting the needle file in just to get the edges really flat. No, possibly the paper disc as well. I don't know, I'd try one or two, find the first one you've experiment with a few different tools, find the way that does it neat and quickly, and then and then just do that. Always when you've got to make one or two or more, or a million like he's doing for these links, um, you always, the first one, second one, maybe a bit slow, but then after you find, find the best tools and you find the best techniques, best method, the exact order of what tools to use and how to use them, then you can just rip into it. So I like this one, they look kind of 
less chunky. They're sort of nicely thin, so it's sort of lightweight uh, without looking weak at all. So I, I would agree this looks good. The sort of gauges of metal and tube size and stuff he's been using. Really neat. I don't think I would have made it as neat as that. I can't imagine. Maybe I should try one. I haven't done one for years, but it's a lot of work just to find out how neat I am. Just make it make it really tight and then it loosens itself up just by not wear and tear but just the metal just finds its position to move the way you want it to so make them tight and you should be able to hold it it should be evenly tight and bend only that way it shouldn't really bend more than a touch the opposite way and then if you put it on its side you don't want it really flapping about sideways either really you aiming to nicely move only one way the way it wants to sit around a wrist pin hammer an old an old burr just could flatten it polish the ends specifically or shape it slightly just to uh, get exactly what you want and then very lightly tap it get to get the metal get it down there and then, and then you've got nice you've got metal against metal then you've got a nice tight join and it's going to solder really nicely you don't want to be trying to fill up gaps when you when you've worked really hard connecting up loads of links together because if your solder goes the wrong way and joins up two links it's a big problem okay there he is paper disc mate the clasp uh oh i gotta make a clasp i've always got ideas for clasp i've actually got an idea for the spring catch on a uh, box. So I'm going to experiment with it, make because there's a new idea I'll come up with, um, a new invention on how to do them. Uh, I'm just going to test it out, and if it works well, I'll, I'll make another make it a box video. I did one before, but it was a Zippo lighter case. I want to make a like a nice box with my own invention type catch. But anyway, right, let's concentrate on this. I feel like he uh, didn't film a lot there. <laughs> just making a clasp. Here's a clasp. <laughs> I've made a few clasps in my career, but I've never really enjoyed it. And I think it's because I've always been shown to make it how someone else wants to make it. Uh, I reckon if I got on with one now here, I could do it exactly how I want to do it and possibly even create a new way of making one. I would enjoy that then. When you do repairs, you end up getting given jewellery from all around the world, all these different weird designs of things. I've seen some really wacky triggers and clasps, box clasps and stuff. I wish I took photos or sort of made a sketch of the design, how they work. Because there's some like really interesting stuff that works really well, they never would have thought of. Is this, uh, oh yeah, it's the link going on top of the tongue. It's bent over, you've got to use hard, hard alloy for the springiness of the tongue, tongue, the tongue. Otherwise they work a few times and then they start to go, they just stay flat after a while. So you want something hard and springy. Okay, that's just like a little step. So underneath the bracelet when the clasp is on there, it's all flat. Just drilling out the, the hinge, it looks, looks like. He's gonna do, um, a figure of eight clasps. I know two different ways of doing a figure of eight clasps. So I can do a video of those on those in the future. Just cut himself. Oh, he's he's making little high quality ones. Okay, like I said I know two different ways of making them. I've never done it that way. I quite like that. Nice, nice hinge, nice and symmetrical shape there. He's a good jeweler. Look. Yeah, this type of chain. It's really strong, and um, it reminds me. There's a buckle on my motorcycle helmet. The actual design of the buckle came from the Romans. It's like over 2,000 years old. And I saw a video, they were testing it against model, more modern, like click and spring loaded ones. And the Roman one beat all of them. It was stronger, like literally the material on these helmets after the clasp was snapping before the clasp would give way. So you put oil on that so it slips and then you can 
zing up and down and then you get stretches everything perfectly so that the movement is all nice and even across the whole length of the train chain and then um, it, it just works better as a chain basically it just flows nicely gets all the links really uniform and he's sticking it down for setting on a piece of wood yeah you get a little bit extra length that's what I learned really quickly because I was just started getting into setting the longer the claw, the easier it is. You've got more leverage to, to put, push over the stone. You just feel like you've got more control over the, the tension and you're putting on the stone and just the direction and the angle and stuff of the claw. It's a good help when you've got longer bits of metal. Bristle brush, yes, I would definitely choose that. They're, they're good. They're, you can work uh, with a lot of control, but with loads of grease on there, they cut really well. But as long as you keep it moving, you don't really wear out the metal. You just round off funny bits, and they, they're good for removing scratches. And if you've got, um, what's it called, like fire stain on silver, that's the best tool for removing fire stain. Those black, strong bristle brushes. And then it looks like a white one is moved to. They're a bit softer, so they're bringing polish up. So yeah, they, they do become polished after the white bristle brushes, but they are, if you loop su surfaces after that, they are a little bit liney. You need to go to the normal mops after that, just as like a finishing technique. Hello, cat. You just paused it. Polish in. That is a very fancy ultrasonic hanging system got to go in there. I'd have like a chopstick with some plastic coated paper clips <laughs> turn into hooks in a row. <laughs> Look at that, what a nice piece of jewelry. All handmade as well, and nice quality stones. So being really critical over it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it at all. It's really well made, really beautifully polished, and it looks like a nice quality handmade piece. But if I'm being really critical, I think the the collets are perhaps a little bit too deep. Maybe have a slightly less of a gap in the middle and then the bottom could be thinner than the top as well. It might just reduce them a little bit. I think it just lo looks a little bit deep, but and the, it's fine really. And then the, the safety chain is perhaps a little bit overly chunky for my taste, but that's just what I'm going on. What I think aesthetically looks nice. I don't know what the customers like requested. They may have said, I want a, a really strong safety chain and I want I like this one and then make it exactly like this. I don't know, you don't know all that. So there you go, that was uh, Yako from the Goldsmiths Workshop Secrets channel uh, and his line bracelet. So save me a ton of work. I don't feel like I have to make the make one anymore to explain how they're done. Uh, the videos, I'll put links to the videos in the description anyway. And also definitely check out the channel because like I say, he, he's a very good jeweler and he does things a bit differently to me. So if you subscribe to me, it's gonna be interesting for you to check out his videos. And his videos are just more professional. He's got a professional workshop as well they're being filmed in, so it's good for that. So if you're new to my channel, if you mind clicking like and subscribe to my channel also, as well as Yakko's. Um, yeah, and then I hope you join me again for future uploads. See you then.